It's Nick here with Co-Optimus. I'm joined by Magic. He is the lead designer on Techland. How you doing? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. The show's just begun, so you got your energy, right? You're, you're good to go? Oh, yeah. I'm s absolutely super excited to be oh, here. Yeah. yeah, so you guys, we, we were just in there. We got to see some gameplay. Justin's still playing. He's going to bring us some impressions. But we're going to talk about some of the features. And let's talk about the first, the standout feature. What sets Dying Light apart from the other games out there? Wow, so many of them. But uh, I think... <laughs> But uh, I guess the feature that we're most proud of uh, is the absolutely unprecedented freedom of movement. Uh, you, you know, we, we, we thought, what can we do to bring the open world experience to the next level? And uh, after we discussed a lot, we said, like, you know what would be awesome? If I could just jump over a wall, climb that fence, get on top of that roof. And we came up with this really awesome prototype, and we iterated on that. And here we are, a game that allows you to, com to traverse completely free. Everything that you see, that you, it seems like you can grab it, you can get on top of that. So it's totally up to you. You can get whenever, wherever you want, however you want. Okay. So how many times do you think you're going to hear the words Mirror's Edge during this show? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've heard that uh, so many times already. But, you know, it's not a good thing. Uh, Mirror's Edge is an absolutely awesome game. Yeah. And uh, we looked in, into it a lot, uh, but you know, um, the, uh, Mirror's Edge was mostly about figuring out the best way through certain uh, environment. It, it was very linear. It, yeah, it was very linear. Dying Light is a sandbox experience, so you know we gave you this vast open world, and it's all for you there to explore, and you do it however you want. So uh, yeah, we we were inspired, obviously. Uh, but this gives you so much more freedom. So is this an iterative on, on your previous tech then? Because like I said, it does look you know a lot better than say Dead Island, Dead Island and stuff like that. Yes, yes. This is our latest iteration in our engine. It's Chrome Engine version six. Uh, we've built it up from the ground up, thinking about the next generation's thing. So all the beauty uh, yeah. is already there. Okay, cool. So co-optimus, we're big on co-op play. We know Dying Light's going to have co-op. What kind of stuff can we expect to do with our buddies? I mean. Sticking together well with all that free running and stuff is going to be a challenge. Is that a focused design decision? Uh, you know, when you're maybe designing the maps and stuff to find ways that players can kind of stick together and, and stuff easier. Well, first of all, you know, we the way we approach co-op is like drinking beer. Um, you can drink it yourself and it's fun, uh, but drinking with friends is just so much better. Uh, so yeah, when we build that game, it was like, yeah, of course we got to have uh, co-op. Um, well, it's it's totally up to you. Again, we don't want to limit your freedom. Like, if you want to stick together and cooperate, awesome. Let's uh, example would be uh, we're sneaking at night. You know, that night is really dangerous. Right. There's a lot of creatures that can rip you apart very fast. So, for example, you could start banging on the door, making some noise, trying to lure the enemies away. This way, I could sneak around them. Uh, so that's one thing. One thing uh, we could try to like set up a set up a trap and beat them to death together. We could try to race to uh, different objectives at the same time. Uh, we could do different separate quests. It's all up to right. you. If you want to cooperate, awesome. If you want to just trade your stuff, uh, okay, I'm gonna finish this quest while you do that, and then we'll meet together and do something else. It's only up to you. Cool. I mean, that sounds great. Like you said, you don't want to limit anybody to, to, to what they can do together. So, when, when playing in co-op, are players we're going to see like scaled difficulty, things like that? Well, uh, you know, uh, when we bring uh, more players to the game, we we need to make sure that uh, you know it's still fun, that it's not you, you don't get to kill everything in your way right away. Uh, so yeah, you can expect that the game will scale up for uh, for more players. Okay. Uh, but in general, you know. Uh, it's pretty much awesome experience all, all around. Okay, so you talked about how you know when it gets dark out, dying light, obviously the title, it, everything gets harder. Um, is there any like base building elements or things like that that you're supposed to kind of like hunker down at night, or are you supposed to use your free running abilities and, and just really just kind of get away from from you know the bad things that are going on? All right. Well, we don't have like base building per se, but the mission that you are able to see uh, in our press demo right now is also about like establishing shelters. So when you, uh, you know, going through that wall is kind of dangerous, so being able to establish shelters that you can use to uh, run for safety or sleep over the night uh, is a big part of the gameplay. Um, on top of that, you can meet uh, additional NPCs or other players in those shelters, you know, trading items, stuff like that. Um, 
Uh, sorry, what was the what was the first of the question? Sorry. <laughs> well, it was basically: Do you want to? Is it hunker down and, and, and defend at night, or do you want to run? Right. And, well, is yeah. it encouraging players to you know use the free running aspect of the game? Again, uh, if you don't want to play by night, that's your choice. But there's a lot of incentive to do that. Uh, so especially the rewards for the player progression. So all this stuff you see the, the way you develop character in Dying Light is by doing. So you want to be better at, par at parkour, at free running, you have to do that. So a lot of climbing, diving uh, below stuff, uh, jumping, running. If you want to be better at combat, you do more of that. Now, if you take the additional risk and do all that stuff at night, you're going to develop your character faster. So that's one thing. Then you can find quests that you can be only completed at night. So again. Okay. And uh, then uh, we have a lot of random situations that just happen. And you might find yourself in a situation that by day it's kind of difficult because, for example, you can run into other humans. And they're pretty badass. Like, many times the humans are actually tougher to fight than infected because they're smart. Right. Uh, but then again, you might think, okay, perhaps uh, if I come back here at night, uh, they might be gone because they'll be scared to go out and I might be take over that thing. Uh, by night, so again, uh, a lot of a, a lot of options to choose from. So there's kind of like a, a living, breathing world, so to speak, where yeah. the, 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 even the AI guys will do different things at night. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you will run into different situations by day, different situations by night. You will be able to see people, uh, you know, like running to to uh, some kind of a safe spot, hiding when the night comes. Okay, cool. Uh, let me think. What else? How yes. many? One more thing. Okay. On top of on top of the dynamic day and night cycle, we also have. Uh, I don't know if you noticed already. Uh, we have the dynamic weather system. So and that also changed the, the thing. But you see, the infected are attracted to noise, so you could use your uh, firecracker decoys to lure them away. But when the storm happens and there's a lot of thunders going on, the infected will also be uh, easier to avoid because you know there's a lot of noise going right. on. So. You can use that to your advantage. Cool. No, that sounds great. It definitely sounds uh, like it's uh, going to be a lot of fun in co-op. So, how many players can you play together with in co-op? Uh, Four-player co-op. Uh, again, it's uh, you can choose the way uh, you want to play it. So, this will be awesome for to see you know uh, people uh, building different, uh, using different builds, complementing each other. Uh, to be honest, I really can't wait to see how far the players can take that game. You know, what kind of crazy mixtures of skills and abilities they're going to put. Okay, cool. All right, well, thank you for your time. No, the, thank you for it, having it, me. Yeah, it's looking great. And uh, we'll bring you some hands-on impressions soon. What happens when all that was good in us is gone? What would that monster look like?